Good evening. Do your little bit of good wherever you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. These famous words spoken by Bishop Desmond Tutu, well-renowned South African social rights activist, could so easily apply to the mission and purpose of community foundations. Since 1914, community foundations have pooled gifts from individuals and families into a single permanent endowment for the betterment of the community. In 1925, when the Hartford Foundation was founded, two bankers had a vision, establish a community-wide charitable endowment that would accept gifts and bequests to serve as a trustworthy, steadfast, and responsive charitable resource in the community forever. Our first bequest came five years later with the gift of $1,000 from a local dentist. This year, as the foundation celebrates 90 years of service to this community, our assets have grown to more than $900 million. So from the dream of two bankers and the gift of a local dentist, the stage was set for extraordinary benefits to this community. Throughout our history, many significant gifts have come in the form of bequests from individuals and transfers from private family foundations. In 1953, Howard Hunt Garmany of Farmington bequeathed five and a half million dollars to the foundation, its largest gift at that time. The Beatrice Fox Auerbach family, and many of you know them, the old G. Fox department store, has made many generous contributions in our region. In 2000, they entrusted the Hartford Foundation to carry out their charitable intentions in perpetuity, shifting a significant portion of their family's foundation to us. That $53 million gift remains the largest to the foundation to date. Yes. In 2007, former chairman and CEO of the Warmold Company of West Hartford, John Davis Murphy, who along with his wife Edie, was very active in the civic life of this region. They bequeathed $28 million to the Hartford Foundation. <laughs> I mean, these are examples of people who made their fortune in this region and wanted to leave a legacy showing their passion for giving back to this community. And more recently, the Richard P. Garmany Fund was established. Garmany, a local executive and man of varied interest, provided for a donor advice fund in his will, leaving more than $12 million to the Hartford Foundation. In the 50s, there was a shift in the way individuals approached their philanthropic gifts. More people began to give while they were living. In 1957, instead of leaving a bequest, Newton C. Brainerd, who was president of Connecticut Printers and one-time Hartford mayor, along with his wife, Elsie, decided to establish a fund during their lifetime and have the pleasure of watching it benefit the community. Similarly, nearly 60 years later, Janice and Carrie Foster established the K.J. Foster Scholarship Fund in memory of their son. And last year, Janice asked her husband, Carrie, a Hartford firefighter, if he would establish a fund here in her honor when she passed away. Well, he said to her, why wait until you pass? We can create a fund now. <laughs> That notion of giving while you're living is a popular one. And Hartford Foundation donors Tom and Dougie Trumbull are an excellent example. And they are here tonight too. 
actively involved in many ways in the Hartford community. In 2006, they set up the donor-advised Trumbull Family Fund with a desire to pass on their philanthropic interests to the next generation. Along with their adult daughters, they recommend grants from the fund, making philanthropy a family effort. And then Wesley Thomas, Thompson, former CEO of Sun Life Financial, and his wife, Rose Marie, a local business leader, established a donor-advised fund in 2014, continuing their active philanthropic contributions to the community. These and the many other large gifts to the foundation have enabled us to serve this community well over the past 90 years. And as the power of philanthropy has spread, sort of a testament to all of you here with us tonight, so too have the number of small gifts increased. In fact, the greatest number of gifts comes in the form of smaller donations, individual gifts from donors from all walks of life who share a common desire to make a difference in our community. And let's cheer them on as well. We very much appreciate that. These gifts, large and small, have been pulled together and have seeded some extraordinary projects that have made real impact in this region. And I'll share just a few examples. In 1977, Hartford Interval House, aided by a grant from the foundation, opened an emergency shelter for victims of domestic violence. The Hartford Foundation and Capital Workforce Partners were instrumental in the development of Hartford Jobs Funnel. Begun in 1999, it provides Hartford residents with career and training opportunities, primarily in the construction-related fields. And in 2009, Wadsworth Athenaeum used a grant to implement a community engagement initiative, which made the museum more accessible to new and diverse audiences, especially Hartford families. The breadth of our reach certainly impacts the capital city, but it extends to all in the 29 towns that we serve. In the 60s, the foundation supported the purchase of 340 acres that is now Talcott Mountain State Park. In 1979, and some may remember, a tornado devastated parts of Windsor, Windsor Locks, and Suffield. In an effort to help rebuild what had been lost, the foundation provided emergency assistance to a tornado recovery task force. And recognizing that libraries are far more than book lenders, we marked our 85th anniversary by awarding grants to advance 21st century computer and internet technologies to the public libraries in each of the 29 towns that we serve. Yes. And we keep a finger on the pulse of the community to address significant social needs as they emerge in our region. For example, 50 years ago, the foundation helped seed the Urban League of Greater Hartford, dedicated to more fully integrating African Americans in the region through education, employment, and housing. In 89, in the midst of the AIDS crisis, we formed the statewide Connecticut AIDS Consortium, one of only nine sites in the country. This was a public-private response to raise matching funds for the care and prevention of AIDS. And of course, we have a long tradition of supporting those who help our newest arrivals from around the world, from such places as Bosnia, Somalia, and India, to name a few. Our grants to Catholic Charities, Jubilee House, and American Place at Hartford Public Library have helped refugees and immigrants become a part of the fabric of our community, including naturalization services. <laughs> Much has been accomplished over the decades, but it's not been without controversy. Let's not forget The rocks. <laughs> there is no doubt we have had impact over the past 90 years. 
Oh, everybody loves the rocks. I love the rocks. <laughs> As this community's foundation, we have seeded organizations that have grown to become thriving institutions. We have worked hard to identify and tackle head-on emerging issues and needs. As we look to the future, the Hartford region can count on us for continued community leadership through collaboration and partnership, promoting needed changes through public policy. We will maintain our steadfast focus on equity, inclusion, and diversity. We will aspire to ignite passion to foster new and innovative ideas from throughout the community. We will tap into the talents and resources of our families, schools, and community partners to ensure that all children, our future, are ready to learn when they enter kindergarten and prepared to succeed when they graduate high school. Yes, cheer. Our goal is to extend the power and the promise of philanthropy to all. Each of you has a role to play. Each of you can make a difference. As Desmond Tutu said, do your little bit of good where you are. So I ask, what are you passionate about? What inspires you to give of your time, your talent, your resources? What hopes and dreams do you have for this community and how can we bring them to life together? In short, how can you be a philanthropist? Thank you.